Right, morning y'all. Kind of just morning. I've not just woken up. Today's video, I want to talk to you about MOI. So MOI, if we look at manufacturers' websites and in their guff about what they say about their clubs, they talk about it. So let's take a look what the manufacturers say. Tailor made here, higher launch, higher MOI. There's that word, they're increasing the MOI. Um, Callaway here, our most forgiven epic ever. Uh, bias and higher MOI it's there again and ping highest MOI this is the highest MOI ever in a club like they're all got this thing that we want the high MOI and in the comments down below let me know what MOI means to you I mean MOI basically is a shortening of moment of inertia moment of inertia is measuring how much twist you could say a club has so on impact how much it twists the resistance the twist in theory is a good thing, it might give you more help with your drives, it might help you just gain a little bit of consistency with your drives, but how? Over the many lockdowns, I've hit a lot of drives with these two drivers, so very contradicting ends of the MOI spectrum. And if you anyone knows the actual MOI value of these two drivers, like again in the comments, hit me up. I don't know the exact measurements of them, but they're gonna be, I guess I reckon one's around 2,500 and one's up near 5,000, whatever the max MOI set is, uh, is at with golf clubs at the minute. Because MOI is controlled, like you're not allowed to go over a certain MOI it's controlled within your golf clubs. Let's start by taking them around the course and show you what I've found. Then I'm gonna show you this massive data set for one person to collect. And I've also got Fergus who helps me digest some of the bigger data sets that I do because I need someone much cleverer than me to help me process all the data. And let's see if we can find MOI. They're all talking about it. Can we find it? Go on, let's do it. So I've got two balls. White will always be the smaller head and the yellow, which is my gaming ball, would be more my gaming size of head. Obviously the pink is just big. You put it down by the ball. Yes, it inspires all these words. Confidence makes you feel like you can do X, Y, and Z. Let's start with just a nice drive, trying to find some level of fairway. Hit that pretty solid just turned it a little bit left which is something we might see in the numbers a little bit but like i do feel like that's just not hard to hit now this is getting more interesting and absolutely does feel like concentration levels might need to be higher and that t is just too high i can't game it off that t so we're going to come a little bit lower just to try and marry it to where i want to catch it on the face and yes definitely you'd put it down by the ball and there's more of a synergy between the head and the ball as you would expect gives you very different feelings oh it's such a good sound this club i think it's one of the best sounding drivers out there that's a little medium fade up there it's got that classic to that sound has to come back in the comments down below which one of those is longer Go on, let's get up there and see. So that is where the old Callaway landed. And we're gonna walk over and find the bigger headed one is here. And basically the tee is on this kind of angle. So it, would, it needs to be ahead of the red stake up there for it to be ahead of this one on the angle. Let's see if we can find it. Uh, which it kind of is. It's here, look, so there's the bunker so I reckon it would have flown that bunker possibly but it's way further left and it's a drop out of the trouble it was a bit of a high toe there's more of a high toe on this club so it was a low spinner which is what kept it kind of going a bit and on this occasion too far and a bit too far left let's move to the next team maybe let's give it a whack what happens if you give it a whack because you need bigger heads don't we so let's try really hard like as hard as I can hit stuff because this is now where we would all think and hope that MOI bigger heads help it's gonna help isn't it oh that's a bit of a block it's a good hit it's just a little too far right Surely you can't hit these up, can you? I mean, I get literally game this driver when I was younger and I don't remember ever struggling to give it a wallop. It definitely feels different. 
and which one I'd rather give a wallop I know. Oh, it's such a nice sound. They're both very similar. That's a worse hit than a straighter shot. So that's like right side, the other one's gone over the trees. I reckon the ping will be further, but again, the berfer will be straighter. And we are talking about a good hit on the ping compared to a very bottomy hit on the Callaway. So like a pretty big miss hit. In the comments down below, I'll be interested as well, anyone who played back when the smaller head was there, I did. I don't remember any more air shots or any more complete miss hits compared to now. So with lessons that I've seen for years compared to people I used to play with, the head's got bigger, the MOI's certainly gone up, but it's not as if I remember people like missing loads of shots with the smaller head or hitting more knobbly ones off the toe than they do now. What do you think? So here is the ping and back by my bag there is the Callaway. It was a worse hit, similar hit. There's not going to be much in these. This flew all the way here. That definitely took a couple of bounces because it was lower, hit out the bottom. Ping again a little bit longer, a little bit further right. That's me. Callaway definitely more in play. So let's go and look at the numbers with Fergus, see what comes out. On course testing, like, I'm never not going to game the bigger head. There's just no point to go to the smaller one. It's more, I'm just not sure how much of it is more about what I feel is happening. To what is actually happening. Because obviously we do see such a physical difference. But is the physical appearance different to the physical outcome? Um, well, let's go and have a look. By far the best sound ever. This driver, I want this sound on every clip. It's so cool. So Fergus, we've crunched the data, or you have, after I've tied myself in a lot of shots. Um, let's start with ball speed and carry. What are we seeing from ball speeds and carry? I got the feeling like the ping definitely could edge out a bit more distance. Yeah, so the, the ping driver is going, on average, when you ignore strike location, seven yards longer. Um, okay. This is probably because we're seeing uh, four and a half mile an hour faster ball speed. We're also seeing some faster clubhead speed, so about a mile an hour in that from the old to the new. So probably on average, I reckon probably five yards if we take into account what the club head speed is doing. Yeah, yeah. Five yards. Wow. I mean, that's not loads, is it? Bearing in mind that we've got two different lengths of clubs there. Yeah, and the fact that they're quite different in terms of age of club as well the fact that we're looking yeah. at what 20 years of technology yeah, 20. improvements and we're seeing five yards probably near five to seven yards difference so i mean we can are they are gains because there's enough shots in here for us to statistically say they're gains i think you were telling me earlier is that correct yeah the fact that we've got over 180 shots of each driver um and the error bars on our, on our graphs are not overlapping as you can see so we're getting a statistically significant increase in both ball speed and carry distance cool okay so then that leads me on then to the trade-off i definitely felt when i was testing these that because i can hit further away from the center of gravity with a modern club and because the older club is smaller headed i didn't feel like i could get as far away from the center of gravity when i did miss hit and i'm talking like extreme miss hits you know getting to the outside of the club like we all do that the modern club had more of a possibility to gear offline. So where I might win seven, five or seven yards, I felt like I might hit it 15 yards further offline. Just, you know, they're just anecdotal numbers, the 15 yards I'm throwing out there, than the older club. Did we see anything in the data? Yeah, so we did. So the older club was straighter. So the older club was on average 1.5 yards right of the centre, whereas the new club was nearly six yards at so 5.8 yards left of center so we're seeing so, a seven and a half yard difference between the two if that makes sense because one is 1.5 yards right and the other is yeah. nearly six yards left so in effect we're losing everything we've gained straight away there aren't we well potentially because you're 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 more likely to be further offline so you know, that's the average so when we take into account the variance on that as well, that's going to be then 
again a bit wider um, and we know you you've said this to me before you and we all know you, you hit it high toe quite a lot yeah like that's your miss that's your miss isn't it and yeah and this club allowed me to do it more allows you to do it more which is then illustrated by the fact that you're going six yards left yeah because your high wow. toe is therefore dipping left I might lose five to seven yards, but I could gain five to seven yards in accuracy on my left to right miss. Yeah, I mean, if we look at the numbers, the short and long vari- variance is pretty consistent across the two. Yeah. So while you may be getting, you're getting that extra distance, the variance between the top and the bottom distance is not is not not massively variable. It's not changing very much. The yeah. one thing we I did notice with the Callaway, the old driver, is that there are quite a few very low carry distance numbers. Yeah. So there's a couple down at sort of two fifty, um, whereas you don't have that in the in the new in the more modern driver. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So the standard deviations were pretty similar, which is what you'd expect on a on a data set of this size. Is that if we had vastly different standard deviations, then it, it becomes a bit of a problem. But they were pretty much the same. So there we go. What an interesting test. Some questions then. So did I find MOI or not? That's the question. You decide. You look at the data. You look at the interpretation we are doing and maybe share your interpretation down below. I mean, you could argue we did find MOI because, like Fergus said at the end there, that there were some noticeably low, uh, shorter shots, which we didn't get with the ping. So obviously, as you get much more to the outside of the club, you maybe see that bigger drop off. Yet we did see a potential to hit further away from the center of gravity a bit more, which allowed the ball to gear, spin, turn further offline, which is something I see day in, day out with students. Um, And again, this is maybe if you want me to do this test with, say, different handicap groups to give it more kind of beef, because I know this is just me hitting, so I'm not, this isn't a definitive answer. It's more of a, a discussion. I think... I found MOI possibly, but you've got to remember when we look at the manufacturers' websites, they're increasing MOI on clubs that are already high on MOI. How much are they really increasing? I am taking opposite ends of the spectrum there and where you could argue I maybe am finding MOI, you are also finding a counter that says, well, you're also finding a potential to hit further away from the sweet spot. So in turn, now you can hit that one more offline, which is counterintuitive because I think lots of people would be commenting saying MOI allows you to hit the ball straighter. It's friendlier. You know, it helps with more consistency. It might help with more consistency in the north and south miss. But in the east and west miss, it might actually give you the potential to increase your variation. What do you think? Interesting, isn't it? I know when I look at MOI and clubs increase MOI from year to year, do they, are they, uh, where are they increasing it, what part of the face, what actually does that mean for an everyday golfer? Maybe we're all being sold clubs a little bit in round and around in circles. At the end of the day, the biggest thing that plays out, I think, with all these clubs, and it plays out again in this test for me, no matter how many shots I hit, is that it's the golfer's skill that comes through. And when we talk on the podcast I do with Lou Stagner, um, the Hack It Out Golf Podcast, if you don't catch that already, maybe go and listen. We've got a great episode where we talk to head of club development with the USGA, and I've been lucky enough to go to talks where the his RNA equivalent was talked. And their mission statement is they want to keep the skill of the game in the hand of the golfer, not the manufacturers. And I think they've done that. I think they're still achieving. There's still debates within the limitations maybe that they've constructed, which are bigger debates, but I think they're achieving that. Yet, we're going to get a whole new row of golf clubs coming very soon, and we're going to see people, I get people coming to me saying, oh, it's so much better and friendlier than last year's one and all the last one I have. And I just think, wow, well, I took pretty opposite clubs. And I struggled to find it. Let me know what you think. Little side note question as well, because obviously the other thing people say um, is that because it's got the bigger head, it allows you to swing it faster. Where the smaller head, you've got to be more precise so people will take club head speed off. I didn't find that at all in my test. And when I look at um, club head speed with free woods to drivers on the PGA Tour over a big data set over many years, all I see is Tour Pro swinging their fairway woods 
equivalently as fast as they swing their drivers subject to it being a short shaft if you made that shaft longer i know for a fact they would swing it as fast is my guess so i know for a fact within my head i wouldn't like something again you'd have to test um and i know if you just make those two drivers exactly the same length and the same weights uh, so i can get exactly the same out of them i will swing them as fast as i physically can Hello, MOI. I'm still looking for you. I think you're there, but are you really there? What do you think? It's a fun test, isn't it? Thanks for watching as always. If you like these tests, let me know. If you want to see more of them, hit that subscribe button. If you're not subscribed already, and if you're missing videos, make sure you've got the bell icon turned on if you're subscribed. And thanks for everyone who is subscribed. Just make sure you've got the bell icon, icon turned on so you don't miss my uploads. I do get a few messages. People saying, oh, I missed this one. I think, get that bell icon on. You won't miss them. Thanks for watching.